Any busy gardener could use a potting table. Not only are they functional, but they're also beautiful to look at in the landscape. Professional gardeners like Monty Don has a potting table. Klaus Dalby has a potting table. And Julia Berlsheimer has a stunning potting table. And I wanted it for my landscape until I saw that it was $1,200. Mm. All right, so when I wanted to find a potting table, I really looked around on the internet and this was the one that caught my eye. I absolutely loved everything about it until I saw the price tag of $1,200. So I knew I needed to build basically uh, a budget-friendly alternative. So this is what I came up with. And uh, again, it was simple to put together. Um, I think it replicates the one from Pottery Barn, but uh, is, is way cheaper. And so if you're looking to build something similar, stick around, I'm gonna show you how. All right, well, as I mentioned, this is a budget build, so we're trying to build this table for about a hundred bucks. If you're looking for something a little bit nicer, maybe something a little more sturdy, then go ahead and upgrade to two by fours and two by sixes. But for me and the budget, I think this is going to work fine. And a few tools that you're going to need for this project would be a miter saw, an air nailer, wood glue, drill, drill bits, some screws, measuring tape, sander, square, and some clamps. First step would be to either paint or stain all of this lumber before cutting and building this project, unless you're like me and you're gonna go ahead and spray it with a paint sprayer. So the first step for me was to build these rectangular boxes. Um, they're very simple, very easy to put together. They're the top shelf, bottom shelf, and then working shelf of this project. They're very simple to cut and paste together. I will have a full cutting list for you um, later on in the video that's gonna help you put these together. Uh, but for now, simplicity of the video and everything, we're gonna go ahead and skip this step. But uh, these were super easy to put together, especially with that cutting list later on in the video. All right, so now that we've basically built the boxes for the table, we need to go ahead and install the legs. And so this is going to be the front of the potting table. And these are going to be the front legs to support the front of the potting table. Now these are 36 inches and we're going to go ahead and tuck them into the corner. I did go ahead and pre-drill some pilot holes here and we're going to go ahead and screw everything together. All right, so now that we've gotten our front legs in, I went ahead and laid the table down and we need to install our back legs. And so basically what the back legs are going to be is 71 and a quarter inches. When you add in the thickness of the top shelf, that puts it at exactly um, six feet tall. Now what I did is I went ahead and marked a line here all the way around for 36 inches. And again, this 36 inches is gonna match the other front legs. And that's also the top of the potting table, the area, like the working top. And so what we're gonna basically go ahead and do is put this into the corner here, and we're gonna line this up with the very top end of the table. And I'm gonna go ahead and use these clamps to hold it in place. Um, I have basically put pilot holes and screws in each corner, um, but once I get this clamp on, then this will go ahead and hold it together while I go ahead and screw everything. Now, what this basically has now is we've got 36 inch front legs, and now we've got 36 inch back legs. And again, the back legs are gonna continue and they're gonna go all the way to the top and that's what's gonna hold the hooks and the top shelf together. By keeping this as one basic leg, it's also gonna add a lot of structural support to the table. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do you like that? Huh? Do you want more? Yes. Basically. Do you want Basically. Okay, break time. It has been so hot lately here in Northern California. Um, like yesterday was 101, today's supposed to be 102. Just too dang hot. Um, but uh, while I take a quick break here, I thought I'd break down how much everything costs piece by piece. So I basically bought 13 five and a half inch boards at $4.68 each, totaling out at $60.84. I bought four three and a half inch boards at $2.48 each, totaling out at $9.92. I bought three two by twos at $2.68, totaling out at $8.04. I bought one dowel for $4.58. And uh, I bought a box of two inch screws and those cost $10.87. And then I bought a quart of paint for $21 and 61 cents, which is a total of $115.
and 86 cents. So 115 bucks, that's a bargain. I'll take that all day long. Heck, if you have some stain, some extra paint laying around, or you plan to just let this kind of patina over time, um, you know, you're below a hundred bucks for this thing. That's, that's a bargain. Um, I see them all day online for 500, 600, 700, 800 bucks. The one we're trying to replicate was $1,200. So that's a, just, you know, a great deal. Um, by the way, do you say potting bench or potting table? I keep seeing everything online as potting bench, but I also see potting table. I'm a potting table guy, obviously, based on this video, I just keep saying potting table. But, uh, you know, let me know below. Maybe there's this whole other name that I'm not familiar with. So um, let me know below. Are you a potting table, a potting bench, or, you know, is there a whole other name for this that I'm not aware of? So, again, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, back to work. Okay, so I know we're flying through this build, so let's slow things down real quick here and just kind of go over everything. So we made the rectangle boxes uh, from the beginning. Went ahead and air nailed those all together. Now the bottom shelf is from the ground to six inches, and I made that mark all the way around and went ahead and screwed that in for, you know, don't air nail it, screw that sucker in. Uh, now the top of the shelf or this front leg that we installed is 36 inches. And so we went ahead and made that flush with the top of the table. So the top of the table now sits at 36 inches. I made that little mark back here on this post and brought this up to 36 inches as well. Screwed all of that in. And then basically we'll be running a cross member here with those hooks. And then up here will be the top shelf. So, so far everything looks real good. It's real nice and sturdy, actually more sturdy than I thought it was going to be. Um, so, so far so good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so our next step is to go ahead and lay it on its backside again. And then we're gonna go ahead and install this upper shelf. And this is basically gonna install exactly the same way as the other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and um, basically put the leg on the inside of the rectangle shelf. And we're gonna match the top side with the top of the post. And I'm basically gonna go ahead and uh, clamp this in place and then screw everything together. We'll do this on both sides. Okay, so what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and add these cross braces to go ahead and add support for the shelf. The easiest way to do this is to go ahead and make a 45 degree cut. And then you're gonna go ahead and butt this up against the shelf here on the inside. Once this is nice and flat and you have it exactly where you want it, you're basically just gonna then go ahead and draw a line. That line will indicate where a 45 degree angle is here. You can go ahead and make the cut. And then basically take this same one and then just make a secondary um, duplicate for the other side of the shelf. All right, welcome back. Day two. So where we left off yesterday is we had the entire frame completed. So what we need to go ahead and do on our next step here is to start laying the lumber for the bottom shelf, the working shelf, and then the upper shelf. And so what I'm basically done is put two clamps in, and this is holding a straight edge on this piece of wood up top here. We're gonna leave no gaps in between the wood because there's nothing worse than you know, working with soil and then have it start falling through all those cracks. Uh, just seems so wasteful, right? So um, there will be no gaps on the top shelf here. So basically once we've gotten this straight edge completed, we can then butt up all of our wood up against it. I'm gonna slightly cut everything at maybe 50 and 1 8. And then that way when I have everything air gunned in and I sand the table before painting it, you can go ahead and uh, just sand those sides and it'll just give a nice, real clean, uniform line on each end of the table. We got that finished and I think everything turned out quite nice here. So we got the uh, top and then the bottom shelf in and the top shelf. So uh, what we're going to do next is we need to get that beam up or the board across here that's going to hold up the hooks. I measured this one out, basically cut it in half. That's where I'm going to put my first hook. Then I centered between here and here, and I'm gonna put another hook here. And then from the center to this side and the half again. So we're basically gonna have one, two, three hooks. And I'll show you how we make those next. Um, I tried to um, you know, film cutting these things and uh, it's just impossible. I need like four hands. But basically what you're gonna wanna do is when you put it on the miter box, you're gonna put it at a 45 degree angle, measure from this corner here, to this corner here as three inches, and then just basically slide it down. Cut it again, measure three inches, slide it back down, cut it again, and then you'll get three, three dowels just like this. Now I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and install those. And this was a little bit tricky too. 
Okay, so getting these suckers secure on this hook has been a little bit of a trick, uh, but I think I figured it out. So um, on this line here, you're gonna go ahead and find the center point to that. And what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is take one of these dowels here and just center it as best as you can between the bottom there. Yeah, I think that's probably the best. And you're gonna wanna use your air nailer and go in at kind of a 45 degree angle and have that hold it in place, okay? So we're gonna put a little nail here right at the bottom. Um, a brad nail, something like that uh, may work. And then you're gonna take your uh, drill here and kind of come in at a 45 degree angle and do it gently. So you're gonna wanna gently put in a pilot hole here. We're going real soft here. And then instead of using those two inch screws, you're gonna use a one inch. And slowly and softly get that sucker in there. there All go. right, so as you can see, I did get this installed. We basically just screwed it in from the back side. You can put it at any height that you want. If you want it lower, higher, you know, put it wherever you want. Um, but uh, I also had a chance to add the hole pattern similar to Julia's design. I really liked that about her table, so I did add that to mine. Um, if you don't like the holes, you could do hearts. Um, if you're gonna paint it, maybe you put a stenciling design. Uh, you could plaster up your favorite saying, like your favorite garden saying. I don't know what that is, but uh, <laughs> um, you could add hooks to the front of this for more storage. This is your table, so get creative. Um, other than that, like I said, I sanded the table already. I'm going to give it a little bit more sanding, kind of fine tune everything. Next up is paint and then we'll be done and ready for the big reveal. All right. Well, here it is. What do you think? I think it turned out absolutely amazing, especially considering this was basically a hundred bucks. Um, but uh, I can really see myself out here in the fall planting all my late season vegetables. In spring, I'll be potting up all my young seedlings. I'm just really excited to have this in the garden. Um, you know, I really love the kind of detail that we have up front with all the holes. I think these hooks are going to really come in handy, this top shelf. Um, again, I'm just really excited to have this in the garden. Um, so stick around. I'm going to have a full cuttings list that's coming up next in the video. And then what's coming up next on the channel is a garden obelisk. So if you want one of those for your, you know, uh, rose garden, uh, maybe tucked away in your vegetable garden or on your front porch, if you'd like to learn how to build one of those, check out the video here. And if you want to check out some other great videos from the channel, check them out here. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.